Hey guys, so today we're going to talk about Cornell notes. I want to introduce to you what they are, why they're important, and why we're going to try to use these during this class. So why should we be using Cornell notes? Cor Cornell notes are considered one of the most effective note-taking strategies out there. The reason they're effective is because in order to learn material, you cannot just be a passive observer. You actually have to be interactive with the information. You need to look at it more than once. You need to write it. You need to unpack it. You need to, to really look into details about the things. The reason why they're so effective is because students shouldn't be passive learners. When you sit down and you just copy notes straight from the whiteboard, you don't necessarily retain the information because you're not thinking about the information. Using the Cornell note-taking strategy, you are able to look more in-depth at the content as well as look more in-depth at your own understanding of the material. So when you actively use the concepts, you have a better grasp of the material in general. The whole, idea between, the whole idea behind Cornell Notes is that students are required to look at the information multiple times just during... The whole idea behind Cornell Notes is that students are required... Main concept behind Cornell Notes is that students are required to look at the information during the note-taking process more than once. Traditionally, you see it on the screen, you hear the teacher say the words, and you write them down, and that's it. But with the Cornell note-taking strategy, taking the notes alone is simply not good enough. Students have to use the notes in order to get all the possible information. So this is what your interactive notebook might look like. And what we're going to end up doing is taking our pages and separating them into four major locations. So what I'm going to do is take this page, and I'm going to draw a line vertically approximately two inches in from the side. Then I'm going to draw, draw a line horizontally, and that horizontal line is going to be about two inches from the top. And then I'm going to draw a third horizontal line, which is going to be about two inches from the bottom. So these four locations are used for four different things. This top part this is used as the title page. The bottom part is used as the summary. The left hand side, this is used for keywords. This is used for questions. And this is used for main ideas and main topics. Now this fourth section right here in the center, let me change the color, this is where you're actually taking notes. So we talked about how your note page is going to be set up. On the next couple of slides, we're going to look at examples of what Cornell notes actually look like. So here is three of our four sections of the Cornell notes. This might be a second or a third page worth of notes where you don't actually have to include the title of the page because you're continuing the notes from a previous section. So notice that over in the left hand side over here we have key ideas or key questions that students had after taking the notes. So here what is the difference between resonance structures and true structures? Those are possible ideas that could be given as short answer questions on a test. The right hand side of the page, this is the large portion of the notes where you actually draw your diagrams, you write your definitions and your sentences. That's where the majority of your note taking time is going to take place. Okay, You are still writing down what the teacher is giving you in the slides or in the presentation, but you are trying to not write complete sentences. You do want to summarize or paraphrase the information in your own words so it's something that you can actually remember and recall. And then again in the bottom, this is where you are writing your summary of the overall page or the overall section of notes. Here's a second example of Cornell notes. So here we have the first page having a title. You have the left hand column that has the questions or the key ideas and the right hand section that has notes. Notice this student took the time to go back and highlight keywords that down in this section they actually went back and wrote a question after the 
after they finished taking notes, and over here they added this information after the fact also. When you take notes using Cornell style, you are encouraged to skip lines. So here, when they have the first section with the large gap, that is a place where she expects to go back and write additional notes later, so she left the space to begin with now. Then again, when you look at the second page, notice that she has the three types of archetypes listed here as the key idea, and then she highlighted the main ideas or the main archetype titles, and then only highlighted the very important information. She's not highlighting everything on this slide. And then again, the bottom, since she didn't have a summary on this first page, her summary section is slightly larger than previously. Here's our last example of Cornell notes. This is a chemistry example. They're talking about forming new substances. So you see in the right hand section, she is writing down definitions and highlighting her key terms. Um, she's summarizing things and there don't seem to be tons of complete sentences, but she does have a lot of bullet points, which is what I do encourage you to do in your notes. And then down the left, she has her questions of what is a chemical reaction? What is a chemical formula? What is a chemical equation? So these are ideas that could be questions on a test or things that she may ask herself when she studies for this section. But this is a great way of showing that you have this section over on the left that you have your questions, a section over on the right where you have your notes, she is making sure that she's not taking complete sentences worth of notes. And then in this section, you're also going to be having your diagrams if you have them drawn or your supplemental material that are given during class time. So here are the four steps to good note-taking strategies using Cornell notes. Our note-taking, note-making, note-interacting, and note-reflecting. When it comes to note-taking, and I know there's a lot on this slide, but bear with me, you are preparing a page to take notes the same way each time. Having the structure is going to help you make sure that you are still achieving the same ideas as you go through your notes. You have the question or the topic at the top of the page to focus on the key learning that is going to take place in this section. You're going to rule the page into two columns, the first column being the column for your questions or key ideas or main topics, and the second column for your actual note-taking section. Then you're going to listen and take notes in your own words, paraphrase, don't write down word for word, make sure that you're putting things in your own vocabulary and your own knowledge. Leave spaces and lines between main ideas for revising later or adding information. Use bullet points whenever possible. Listen for important information versus Snapple facts. As interesting as Snapple facts might be, it is something that you don't necessarily need to know for the test. And use highlighters and color or underline or circle. Make sure that you are utilizing the strategies that you have at your disposal to make sure that you are understanding things. For example, if we're doing an equation and you have four unknowns, highlight each unknown in its own color. That's an easy way of seeing where they go in the equation and what you're solving for as your unknown variable. Then you have note making. When you make notes, you are going to review and revise the content of your notes. This is when you're going to be going back and adding questions in the left hand side near where the answer is contained on the right hand side. So back in our examples, you would have noticed that there were spaces in between the questions. They wrote them near where you can find the answer. Connect key ideas or chunks of materials using color or symbols. So these are those brackets or those highlights and exchange ideas and collaborate with other students to check for understanding. See if you can look at each other's notes and understand what they're writing down versus what you have written in your note page. In note interacting, you're going to link all of the learning together by writing your summary. So you're going to attempt to address the essential question or refocus on the topic that the content was over and make sure that you know that the summary should be different from a reflection. The reflection focuses on your response to the learning. A summary just states back what you should have learned. When you do this summarizing or this note interacting, this should be built into your time. You don't necessarily want to do this all at the end of the unit. You want to be doing it as you go, so you make sure you're understanding the key topics as you go through the sections. If you know that you made a mistake then, or 
or if you wrote something down incorrectly or whatever the case may be, you then have the ability to go back and revise your notes when they are fresh in your brain instead of trying to go back and revise them a week or two later. Make sure you cover the information on the right-hand side and use the questions to study before a test. So if you can look through your left-hand column and make sure that you're reading those questions and being able to answer them, you should have less study time at the end of the unit because you're doing smaller steps during the unit. And finally, note reflecting. In note reflecting, you are providing written feedback from a peer, a tutor, or a teacher to check for your understanding. So essentially what's happening is as we do the foldables, as we do the interactive learning log activities or the learning stations, I'm checking for your understanding of the material to make sure we don't have to go back and relearn or reteach a concept. You should at the very least look at the feedback to understand where your understanding falls, what you may need to look at again, or where you may need some more additional help. If you don't use the feedback, there is no reason for getting it in the first place. When I write you notes on your worksheets or I give you feedback on a lab report, if you never look at it again, you are never going to grow as a learner. By doing these steps through Cornell Notes, setting up your pages, physically taking your notes, going back and adding your questions in the left-hand column or your key concepts and key ideas, and then summarizing everything at the bottom, you are now reflecting over the unit of study on a regular basis. You are doing small chunks worth of work to make sure that you have a larger and deeper understanding of the content. So the whole idea behind Cornell Notes is the fact that you are being forced to look at the material more than once. I want to see the first couple of units at the very least being written in Cornell Notes strategies. If you decide that it's not for you after that, then I understand and maybe you have a strategy that works a little bit better for your learning type. But you may find out that you're surprised and you're retaining the material a little bit better through the Cornell process.